computer. Okay, we're recording now. Uh, okay, so hello. I'm, uh, I guess just to introduce this to the people that will be watching this, um, Liz Banish here from the Center of Contemporary Printmaking, um, studio manager and collaborative printer. Um, and I'm here on the horn with Liz Chalfin and Sheldon Carroll of ZMA's Printmaking in Florence, Massachusetts. Um, thank you for joining me, you guys. And also thanks for putting up with what will be some like technical difficulties for sure. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Um, but the reason why I wanted to talk with you guys today was because you have this documented experience of printmaking in Venice, um, right as it turns out, when coronavirus was begun to shut down the city. Um, so you guys were there um, from the February 28th until Saturday 27th, uh, Saturday, bleh, from Saturday, March 27th. So you guys were there for like three no. weeks? February 15th. To March 7th. To March 7th, okay, 15th. So you were 15th to the 7th, so you were there for three weeks. We were. Yeah. Um, and the great thing about this experience is that you have it documented both in the form of your artwork from your residency, which I'm really looking forward to going through with you here. Um, but what's really fascinating to me is that you have this blog um, that documents your daily experience and it actually really, um, it just happens to shine a light sort of on this particular moment. And there's one quote from you guys on Tuesday, on Tuesday the 18th, that um, kind of blew my mind, like sort of looking back after the fact, where you ruminate, you say, how do we capture something of what we are experiencing without being cliche? <laughs> so I think you did that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, Venice, is this city that is so gorgeous. Um, everything you look at in that city is beautiful. Every canal, every bridge, every, you know, peeling wall. The graffiti. The graffiti, <laughs> everything is so beautiful and um, so documented, you know, in art, um, historically and contemporary art, you know, that you can just- Public art. Bring up so many images of people kind of depicting Venice. And so you're kind of, when you get there, you think, what can I do that hasn't been done already or, and better, you know, that I could do? I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that was kind of how we started thinking about, like, what is it about the city that we can um, notice and ex have an experience with that maybe we haven't seen before in yeah. uh, other art? Right, so um, can you describe the beginning of your time in Venice and sort of, um, you know, paint us a picture of how things transformed as the weeks progressed? Um, you know, the beginning versus, you know, the end as far as where your heads were at with your expectation with your work and then how things progressed. Um, yeah, well, just arriving to the city in itself was, you know, kind of an unreal experience because it, it felt to me as if I was going to uh, an amusement park. You know, it's an island, it's already, you know, set apart. And then, you, you know, and you pull in on a boat and then it just enfolds in front of you, the architecture and the colors and the water. So it was just kind of so very unique from the get go. And, um, you know, we went, as a couple to this residency with the intention of doing a project together. And we'd never collaborated on an art project before. Mm. So we had to think of something that we both were interested in doing and could do. And in our previous travels together, we've always kind of relied on photography as a way for us to document our experiences and to share. And we had this habit of at the end of every day, we'd sit in bed and look at each other's pictures and, you know, comment on them and stuff. Nice, nice. So we thought that, um, you know, some kind of photo printmaking would be a great way to approach this. Plus the school had invited us to teach a workshop in this um, photo mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. So it kind of meshed what we were gonna do with our work, the um, 
workshop they wanted us to teach, the way we work together, it um, felt like doing this photo etching process would be a good way to do it. And it was a great excuse for us to just kind of roam the streets looking for visuals that inspired us. So our first couple of days, we checked in at the school, kind of got the lay of the land, and then we just went out into the streets for a few days and photographed. And that's what, we, we got there the last week of Carnival, which yeah. is insane, you know? It's just this. If, yeah, even in, in its reduced state. What is Carnival? Uh, what happened previously, you know, the, all the troubles that Venice has had with the high water in November. So the city was already struggling with tourists. Right. There are fewer tourists this year than previously anyway. But even in that state, it was, it was pretty wild. Yeah, so, uh, so can I ask um, really quickly, what, what is Carnival? So it's an annual celebration. It doesn't have quite the same religious connections that Mardi Gras has, mm -hmm. because Venice is a city that was built by mer the merchant class and not the mm -hmm. religious class. So it has right. a really different vibe. Right. Um, so it's this costume celebration where people dress in um, what? 17th, 18th century costume, you know, Marie Antoinette. And it's like this gigantic costume party in the streets for weeks. So everybody, you know, it seems like everybody is in some elaborate outfit with wigs right. and hats and feathers and... With the intention of being photographed. Sure. So it's like this voguing scene all over right. the city. There's these, you know, people in these costumes that are just... Full character. Yeah, posing on bridges and stairways and crowds around them, photographing them. So... So right away, it, it was... There were masks. Right. I mean, people in masks, either in carnival masks or, you know, tourists in surgical masks, you know, which we're getting used to seeing before anyway. the pandemic anyway. And, um, and then the, the buildings with, uh, and the bridges, there was a face, a statue on virtually everything. Every piece of architecture is somehow adorned with a human likeness, which is crazy. So right away, I mean, one of the issues for us when we travel is feeling like an American tourist plopped into a strange place and Absolutely. not wanting to be that ugly American. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we start out kind of feeling watched anyway when we go to a new place. Right. But this city felt like... It watches you. <laughs> it watches you. Right, right. You know, plus the CCTV. So it seemed like there were faces looking down upon you everywhere. And not necessarily being surveilled, but even kind of being looked over, looked after. Right. Yeah. Right. So maybe a different sort of um, gaze, like maybe one that's a little bit more protective rather than like punitive. And as we got to know some of the people at the school, the locals, and you know, hung out with them and they started telling us stories about the origins of some of this, the mascaroni, these um, mascaroni. Yeah. that hold up the keystones of the arches and things, you know, as being, um, you know, the, the, the stories and the legends around them, how they're on every bridge because when you take a boat under a bridge, it's an opportunity for the devil to kind of grab your soul grab your soul so every kind of intersection is a choice between good and evil so there's somebody there watching which choice you make right. the faces <laughs> on the bridge are trying to scare away the dead before coming up through the canal from the water cool yeah, hearing these great stories as we got to know people was really fantastic yeah and the mascaroni is uh, a face a figure that ends up showing up in your work later quite a bit yeah well, that's what we decided to focus on was, um, you know, so once we were out in the streets and looking at things and it's like, okay, there's so, you could just photograph the textures of the buildings and Absolutely. have a gorgeous series of work. Right, you just walk beside your door and every canal, <laughs> every corner, every bridge, right. travel log photo. So we kind of thought, okay, we'll take this idea of being observed and we'll use the um, figurative sculpture that's everywhere in the city and use that as our jumping off point for our, um, our print project. 
Um, plus that, you know, we thought, okay, we're here for three weeks. We have this commitment to the school. We're going to spend our first week in the school really concentrating on this project. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go see sites the second and third week. Well, by the time we were ready to go to museums and see sites, things were closed. Yes. So then it was, okay, it's the architecture and what's on the architecture for us to bounce out. Right. So that also kind of made that decision for us. I'm going to bring up your blog really quickly here. Okay, so are you able to see that? Yep. Sure are. Okay, great. Um, so this is the blog that documents your experience um, printmaking in Venice. And um, so we'll, yeah, we'll bring up some of these textures that you speak of. So this is what you're talking about here. Exactly. I mean, like every doorway, every wall every, it is so gorgeous. And um, it just, it, it's one of the most magical cities I've ever been in. Mm. But those, th those are some of the Mascaroni that we decided we would focus on. So, you know, some are scary, some are benevolent, some are, um, you know, related to the families that live in those places, um, some are just um, invented figures. It, there, there, there was a whole industry uh, that made these. And the ones that belong on private property um, are better maintained than the ones that are on public property. Mm. Because the the city can't maintain all of them on their own right so there are artisans that are tasked with repairing these mascaronis um and here's some images of your uh you did a uh copper saline etch with aluminum plates um yeah. So we did this weird kind of hybrid process, and this is what we were asked to teach there, where we um, use a polyester litho plate, a pronto plate, and instead of inking it up with ink and printing it as a print, we're inking it up with big ground, an etching ground, and transferring that onto aluminum, and then etching the aluminum to get these photo etchings. Right, so what we're seeing in this image on the right-hand side are those pronto plates that have been rolled up in the big ground and then on the left is after they've been uh the polyester plate has been pressed against a aluminum plate and then run through the press to transfer the big yep. exactly yeah um yeah and um the reason we were invited to have this residency at the Scuola is because their shop manager roberta fioli um, had come to our studio the previous year and we gave her this intensive training and some safer etching practices and so in exchange they invited us for this residency and we were kind of extending what we had the chance to show Roberta. And you did have a chance to conduct a workshop. We had a chance Sorry, to do half a workshop. <laughs> it kept getting pushed back and we finally got to do one day. So the weird thing about the way the virus kind of unfolded there is, um, you know, they, the first, so after we were there a week, we were there in the midst of car, the last weekend of Carnival, we were in the St. Mark's Square, which is this giant square packed with people, and we get a phone call from home saying, um, Italy's closed down the Carnival because of the virus, and we're standing amongst all these people going, oh, really? We were in the state of euphoria. Yeah you know, for those Friday and Saturday and Sunday morning. So it was a rude awakening. But then we go to the school, we walk to the school to find out, okay, what's the real story? And they're saying, we're shutting down the school, we're shutting down everything. But then the following week, they reopened for a couple of days and we squeezed our little workshop in on one of those open days and then they closed right away again. So it was an open, close, open, close kind of uh, situation for them. But we were still allowed to be in the artist and resident studio and continue our project. Absolutely, right. So um, according to your blog, um, there was an opening and a closing and an opening and closing, like you mentioned. Um, you managed to have your workshop on that Monday, March 2nd, um, and then Tuesday, March 3rd, um, it closes again. Um, so you did have a chance to work with some artists still 
um, while things were shut down. So you were kind of in this bunker of artists kind of shut in together. So how yeah. can you describe that a little bit more? Well, what was really weird is that, um, so the, the way their sp space is set up is they have a separate room for their artists and residents. And there's usually up to, I think, six. When we were there, there were um, four artists and it's, residents. It's a separate building from the um, print shop. Mm -hmm. um, and when we arrived, one of the artists and residents had the flu Another one had some mystery illness. We didn't know what it was. And um, turns out that she had rubella. Uh, <laughs> so we felt like we were kind of surrounded by disease. Yeah. <laughs> but every disease that wasn't the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but it just set up this kind of feeling. Uh, you know, other residencies, you get very kind of close and tight with the people you're working with. But this really was a separation. So that one little afternoon that we were able to do the workshop, and the workshop was attended by all local Italians uh, was great because it felt like community, you know, and so wonderfully Italian. Halfway through the, um, the workshop, they took a break and we had, you know, sparkling wine and quiche, little quiches that they bought. You know, we all sat around the table. And, and their little teeny, teeny, tiny coffees. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it was fabulous. So, um, it was really nice to connect with those Italian artists and so much fun to listen to our words being translated into Italian um, by the shop manager there. But it was so brief that we really didn't have a chance to get to know people. Right, so, so then after things are canceled and you are creating work at the Scuola with other artists that are shut, in with you, so how long are you in that situation for? Two weeks. Two weeks. So you yeah. have a long time yeah. for yeah. two weeks making work. Yeah, um, and because these other artists were sick, or the one with Rubella was in isolation in our living quarters, not at the studio, we had the whole place to ourselves pretty much all the time. Um, occasionally, the shop Just manager like the would come in. Uh, <laughs> But we had the studio to ourselves, and it's so interesting working in somebody else's studio. Um, you know, you still find your favorite press, your favorite little area to work, and um, so that's what we did. Yeah, that's one of the plates we did for the workshop. Yes, um, love this image because it um, looks like the mascaroni sort of embedded in the metal, right? And then, you know, I, I love that color of the saline edge. It reminds me of the canal. It's a very yeah, nice idea. It looks just the color of the canals. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. That's actually this um, uh, image of this graffiti artist's work that we saw all over Venice. This graffiti artist was doing these stencils of this woman's face. And so we captured that as, along with the sculptural pieces. Um, yeah, I was um, pulling this up to find um, an image of the streets of Venice because um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the comparison between the beginning of your experience versus um, towards the end because uh, what's really interesting to me is that um, as you mentioned in those last couple weeks that you were um, working um, you were by yourselves in the city that usually never sees any rest and you had a chance to see Venice completely empty right we did and it was weird because after carnival ended so you know they the the virus kind of wiped out the last weekend of carnival and people left the city in droves and we didn't know if they were leaving because of the end of carnival or if they're leaving because of the virus but day by day after that weekend it just got emptier and, and emptier, emptier yeah. and emptier until you know the couple of days before we left we could walk the city that was normally jam-packed with people and not see a soul. Right. Absolutely. Restaurants and things were still open. Yeah, but um, the streets were empty and there were no tourists. Um, so it was, you know, what the locals told us is, you know, you're seeing a Venice that nobody's seen for 15, 20 years. And that was incredible. So how did that shift your process 
um, as you were um, trying to create a body of work in this new city? Well, it was, it was difficult because that's at the point where anxiety had started to creep in. You know, are we going to be stuck here? One of the other artists and residents had already fled to Rome because she was afraid of being stuck in Italy. And we had considered coming home early since the workshop had kind of fallen through. But the price of doing that was way more than we could afford. So we knew we were in for the long haul. So, you know, every morning, you, every you know, scratchy throat, am I sick? Everybody knows, do I have it? But at the same time, we were able just to run the streets of Memphis <laughs> virtually unnoticed. So it was really a tale of two experiences as kind of the whole trip was. And in our project, we so we had been printing these plates individually on, um, you know, heavier Western paper, and then also on uh, Gompi, thin Gompi. And so towards the second, third week, we started to um, layer these up, you know, a uh, Gompi image on top of a Western paper printed image and, and make these layers. And that started to kind of resonate with us about these layers of experience we were having and about these veils of like this virus <laughs> overlaying right. everything. And so the work got a little more, um, I, I would say it got fuzzier and less, um, um, I don't know, less descriptive of the world and more descriptive of the feeling of the space, which I think reflected our own experience being there. Because we would vacillate between like absolute joy and wonder to anxiety and terror all within the same day you know we would read the news uh in the at night and you know worry about everything we'd get out into the street in the day and it'd be fantastic and so we were just kind of vacillating between these two extremes so we stopped listening to, or watching the news at night mm. <laughs> Yeah, when we decided we were in for the long haul and we couldn't do anything, the only thing we'd look at was the State Department's regulations about, you know, leaving. Um, but otherwise, we just ignored everything uh, so we could function. That's fair. Um, okay, let me bring up some images of these prints because I would like to talk to you about your work now. Um, so you mentioned that you, uh, so you've done this photographic etching process um that um is an etching on aluminum it's um a safer process um than a lot of photo etching processes out there um so it is the reason that brought you to the scuola so that you could teach it um to uh the artist there um and uh talk a little bit about um sort of the process of image selection um, and color choice, um, and perhaps even size, and maybe even your, um, your, you're just finishing up the work now, so I know that perhaps it has a different form now than maybe when you left Venice. Yeah, you know, we had thought that maybe we'd make an artist book, a series of prints. We weren't quite sure what final form the images would take, but, um, we were limited in size because we brought the place with us. So we, um, you know, we kind of predetermined the size that we'd be working with. And then when we got there, um, we um, took tons of photos. And what was the selection process like of choosing what images to use? I don't know. It's like, I was looking for drama. I was looking for drama in the faces of the Moscaroni, maybe some terror. Um, but, then, but then the religious um, images kind of snuck in. It, it, you know, the Virgin Mary is all over the city. And um, so it, it was kind of hard to separate those, those two things. So they kind of merged, merged together. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were, we were looking for images that evoked this feeling of, of obser being observed by these stone statues. That's 
different work. That's that's from <laughs> well, different work. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back. Um, yeah, and yeah. and we have some here too. Um, oh, great! Yes, we have some of our work here. So you know, we were looking at forms. We were looking at um, decay. We were interested in the way these um, faces could be transformed from the faces they are to something else. We were looking, you know, in some instances Beautiful. Yeah. at um, really close up uh, images as opposed to being far away to kind of put it right in your face. Right, you're getting really close to these mascaroni faces like that. That's not usually how you'd be encountering them. Right, right. who have, you know, real expressions in those blank eyes. I know. <laughs> yeah, so we wanted to make them more than just an architectural ornament. We wanted to give them more of a um, presence. Absolutely. And so that close-up vision. So we spent a lot of time just um, play, cropping in Photoshop, you know, playing around. So at night, we would look at our pictures, we would manipulate them in Photoshop, crop them, blow them up, layer them, and then there was only one um, copy photocopy store in the whole city that could make the plates for us. So then we'd have this daily walk where we'd go stop at the copy store, make pronto plates, bring them to the school, make our etching plates. Um, so the work kind of evolved from our experience. Right. And now, months later, that you're looking back on your work, and you did just finish it for print day in May. Did that happen? <laughs> well, we, we, printed, we finished printing. Now we're going to mount them. Okay, great. Um, so so w was it like to look at this work now months later? I mean, have you, have you thought about it or looked at it before now since the residency? Um, or have yeah. you been? Yeah. Yeah, we have. We've pondered a lot and we've we've played with the juxtaposition of images and things on top of another just to see how they feel how they look so we've had a lot more time to do that than we expected and then so I think some of the things um, ended up being a little different than they might have if we had finished it right away when we got home yeah because originally we thought we'd really limit it to just mascaroni mm -hmm. but we had taken a lot of um, photography of other sculptural images that were really compelling. Um, so when we got home, we decided, let's gonna broaden a little bit. Like, mm. this guy we just fell in love with. Yes. Uh, he has this- um, Iron nose. This iron. was just a statue, you know, on the side of a store. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. a fantastic iron nose. So. so then we decided we'd broaden the idea away from just the mascaroni to kind of the faces of Venice that um, we felt were watching over us as we were there. And I was fascinated by the religious, um, what are the tableaus or the, the little shrines that are, that are everywhere, but they're all covered. There's either a sheet of glass or a fence or a wire in front of you know Jesus and Mary and all these places, which I presume are just to keep them safe from the public, which I found fascinating. <laughs> so there, it's like caged religious icons. Right, Jesus, right, right. Behind, Jesus behind the chaining fence was something I could not resist. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, well, this has been really interesting to talk to you guys about. Um, before we wrap this up, uh, do you have sort of any plans for how this work will be displayed? Um, are you thinking about that at all at this moment? <laughs> How's anything displayed at this moment in time? <laughs> um, well, we're going to mount them. So, you know, they'll be nicely mounted on pieces of uh, rag paper and so they can be shown, you know, framed or unframed. Um, we're not sure. We. You know, we came back hoping that we could share the work, share our stories with people, and we went into isolation voluntarily when we came home for two weeks. And when we came out at March 22nd or something, um, the rest of the country was in isolation. So right. you're the first person we're even talking to about this work, <laughs> which... Yeah, we didn't so expect scary. this to turn into a 
four month or three month experience. Um, so I'm not sure how we'll share it. We'd really love to. Um, you know, perhaps when my gallery up in Brattleboro, Mitchell Giddings Gallery opens up, we can show some of them there. Um, or at least here at CMAs. Or at least here at CMAs in our gallery. So we'll find a way when it's time. But in the meantime, we're still kind of interested in the work and um, working with the components. We have about 15, 20 finished pieces that we're happy with and about 50 unfinished pieces of <laughs> printed paper that we can still play Great, with. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for talking with me about this. Um, and now this will be recorded and we will be launching this for our discussion Tuesday. Um, this Tuesday, May 12th. <laughs> Um, so then more people will be able to kind of hear your story and engage with it. Um, and I'm wondering if we'll get some really interesting responses. Uh, so thank you so much for talking with me about this, you guys. Thank you, Liz. It was a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for your interest in everything. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop recording now.